Hello again. I'm excited to talk about putting my rig theories into practice and actually setting up a character for animation. This video will be part rigging demo and part animation demonstration. So let's rig a character together. So one of the first and one of the most time consuming parts of getting your character going is setting up the artwork from the three quarter front pose and setting up the artwork isn't just having a drawing the reason why i left the symbols in these random colors is to show off the fact that each of these symbols is indeed its own piece and part i left in the reg wheels so that you can also see what tool i'm using to line everything up everywhere you see a red circle that's actually a place of overlap between the parent and the child symbols the setup on the art took about four hours once the symbols are all created, you'll move the pivot point to wherever the symbol is going to rotate. That's one very important step, but you're not done. In order for the plugin to understand how to manipulate that symbol, tap Control T on the keyboard and that'll pop the registration point to that pivot point location and update the registration point. There are actually a couple of symbols where I didn't do this properly and I had to go back and and fix that so as important as this step is you know don't worry about it too much if you forget forget to do this on a symbol or two you can always do this later all right so now that those registration points are updated let's go ahead and check that if you select all of the symbols and you have your arrow tool selected you should notice that little plus sign in the middle where all those pivot points are now the next step is to set center markers and magnet targets for each of the symbols if there are any places where your pivot points and registrations aren't matching up well, this will be the place, this will be the step where you're going to be notified about that. You'll just need to go back out, go to a wireframe view and line those up. Two really handy shortcuts to fire off as you're doing this. Alt tilde to create a center marker and shift tilde to create a magnet target. You want to keep in mind that for symbols like the chest, you will have multiple magnet targets. I actually forgot about the tail, right? We're also gonna need one extra one for the tail in this rig. All right, once center markers and magnet targets are all set up, 
it's time to create the smart magnet rig. In all the tasks in setting up a character for animation, creating the smart magnet rig has to be one of the fastest and one of the most satisfying parts of this whole process. Part of the reason that Flash Power Tools is so easy to use, the setup in each step really builds towards a, a real smooth process once you do get to creating your magnet rig. Many of these steps are very, very forgiving. Um, I am a recovering perfectionist, so it's easy for me to want to obsess and make sure that everything is perfect. Um, but if you forget something, if you miss a step, you know, if there's a reg point that's not in the right place or a center marker that's not where it needs to be, needs to be created, even setting up the skeleton here in the smart magnet rig window. This process is very forgiving where if you need to go and make some adjustments, it's not a big deal. So for all you perfectionists out there, like, you know, again, don't stress, don't worry. You'll never encounter a point of failure that's so catastrophic that you'll, you know, that you have to worry about it. It'll be really easy to go and, and fix and make the adjustments that you need to to complete your rig. So now using the tag editor, we're going to associate and link the symbols to the bones in the smart magnet rig connection editor. When the connections are done right, there's no feedback. You're only going to get a dialog window when something's wrong. What I find is the usual suspects, the magnet targets in the chest, sometimes throw me for a loop. Uh, every once in a while, if I'm reusing symbols, like I reuse the hand symbols from another model and I just duplicated them here, I had to go back in and make sure that those magnet targets were set up and put in the right place. All right, so now we can see what the completed skeleton looks like. It looks somewhat fox-like, right? You see two nodes where the ears are. Um, I'm, I'm doing something where I have a collarbone for the shoulder so that I can do shoulder shrugs. It allows the character to emote better by being able to raise the shoulders or lower the shoulders. Once we're done setting up the connections here in the connection editor, we're ready to test the rig out. Really satisfying stuff. I found something really kind of interesting about the Flash Power Tools, uh, the way that it works. Obviously, as a plugin, it works seamlessly with the Adobe Animate Tools. But when, when I had the character jump into the air, I just used the arrow key and selected all the symbols and moved the character up into the air, you know, basically up on the Y, on the Y axis. And I thought, uh oh, you know, I'm not using the um you know the g key to manipulate and move these elements i wonder if it's going to be okay and it was perfectly fine so what's awesome is that the way that the animation process works um the plugin doesn't really care like how you move the symbols across the stage and in that sense it makes me think that the flash power tools plugin is not really managing the placement or the rotation of the elements it's really just allowing you to manipulate them in a logical way based on that skeleton, based on that smart magnet rig. That is actually so super cool. In another animation test, I had the character flip. For you Flash and Animate Power users, you may remember that if you rotate a symbol 360 degrees, when you tween it, it'll actually rotate it 180 degrees and then it'll rotate it back counterclockwise. Right? It's like trying to find like the the shortest path to animating something. However, if you if you rotate it 90 degrees and then use another keyframe, rotate it another 90 degrees, and then use another keyframe and rotate it another 90 degrees, it will rotate 360 degrees as you would have liked it to have done with just two keyframes. The keyframe placement just helps the computer assistant animation to know that you actually want to spin the character clockwise completely. It, it helped me to understand like what I can expect out of the tweening process so that I can set my keyframes to get exactly the results that I want when I'm using the plugin. 
please help me get the word out about Flash Power Tools. Uh, these developers are doing an awesome job making Adobe Animate really relevant again. Not every animator is gonna need to go that direction, but, um, but I really feel for artists, for animators and storytellers that don't have the time to do dozens and dozens of drawings to tell their story, puppet animation could be a great way to go. You can set up a cast of characters and you can just animate to your heart's content without fussing and fighting with drawing. Does it sound like I'm an animator that doesn't like to draw? <laughs> Imagine that. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I'll see you next time.